this morning we are joined by Irina uh, from UMC Utrecht. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and Irina will be starting um, with a short talk for all of you. So um, just a bit of information about Irina. Irina's background is in neuroscience. Uh, she worked for Utrecht University as policy advisor on open science and fair data. And Irina has worked for UMC Utrecht and Academic Hospital since 2019 and currently works at the Central IT Department as Coordinator Research Data Management. So I hope I didn't miss anything, Irina. Mm -hmm. And I'll just mute myself now. Yep, perfect. Thank you, Magdalena. I will start sharing my screen. Yes, let me put it. Do you see my screen, my uh, slides all right? Yeah. Yeah, all yeah. right, perfect. Yeah, so thank you for the uh, invitation and also for the introduction. There's uh, basically nothing uh, left for me to say about it, except that maybe for those of you who are not from the Netherlands, uh, if you are wondering where Utrecht is, it's located right here in the center of the country. Um, and yeah, Magdalena already mentioned that I work for UMC Utrecht, this is an academic hospital. Uh, and as you would expect from an academic hospital, we have basically three main pillars, uh, care, research, and education. And these pillars are largely intertwined, um, right? So we have many uh, clinicians who dedicate some part of the week to research. And we have a very large uh, number of, uh, of, of, of students who do an internship, for example, in the hospital. Irina, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but your, your slides are not in full screen mode. I wonder, it would be easier to see if you could find out a way to do that. Um, Thank you. Like this? Yeah, better. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you for <laughs> mentioning that. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So we have these three main pillars. And yeah, the academic hospital, it's pretty large. We have over 12,000 employees. Um, and um, we have around 2000 researchers and research supporters. And all these uh, researchers, they work in one of 10 divisions. And then the division is for example, division uh, heart and lung or division child, division brain. And within these divisions, we also have the research supporters. So the researchers and the data stewards, they both work within the same division. They know each other very well. Uh, and that's also important for, uh, for the DMP uh, that I will talk uh, about. Um, let me switch on to the next slide. Um, so for a couple of years, we've had a RDM policy in place. And in this RDM policy, it describes that we, uh, the importance of fair data and open science. And it also mentioned that DMPs are required for all researchers. And, and we encourage them to use the UMC Utrecht specific DMP template. Uh, now, because it's in the policy, this, this acts a bit like a stick. It's also part of the research approval. So before researchers can go through the whole ethical approval process, they need to have their DMP in place. Um, but of course, we, we mainly try to, well, make, make the researchers uh, a bit excited about the DMP and show them what the benefits are for them if they think about the research upfront. So whenever a researcher starts, their, starts writing their DMP, uh, the data stewards in their division schedule a feedback meeting uh, where they can discuss any questions that they were not able uh, to answer. Um, and the UMC Utrecht template also has many links, for example, to our intranet or to other forms that researchers need. So we really try to integrate it within their whole starting their research uh, procedure. If we look at the at our templates, uh, we encourage the re encourage the researchers to select this option, uh, no funder associated, so they they can start it with our templates. And if we look at our templates, um, I will not go through all the chapters, but one thing I would like to point out is that we have a data protection impact assessment as part of the DMP. So this chapter in DMP online. Um, it, it basically asks the researchers, will you collect any personal data? If so, why? What are the rights of the participants? And how, uh, 
how do you make sure that only authorized people will have access to those to uh, to the personal data? Um, so we try to make it easier for the researcher to combine the, the general questions about the data together with this required part about the uh, the DPA. And of course, when they uh, we we uh, we uh, refer them to the internet pages uh, so that they are also uh, able to look for more information on these parts. Um, after a uh, researcher is done with their DMP, uh, they can share their uh, DMP with their division data steward. And as I already said, those people work closely together. They work in the same division um, so that they know each other. So we do not, uh, we've never used the general request feedback button, but we always share it like this so that the DMP and the request for advice comes uh, immediately, goes immediately to the right person. Um, yeah, the, my last slide is about the current usage. I thought maybe you are interested to see how it is going in UMC Utrecht. So here on the top left, you can see the number of, number of users joined during last year. And you see that we have a, well, pretty stable number of around 50 new researchers who join DMP online uh, every month. On the top right, we see the number of plants. Uh, also there, we see around 50 new plants created every month. Some months uh, are more DMP uh, intensive, I would say. <laughs> um, and of course, these numbers exclude the test plants. And then uh, over here, you can see that of the people who create a DMP, almost everyone uses the UMC Utrecht DMP template. And we also hear that they are quite happy with that so that they immediately know uh, what kind of other procedures are in place. And with that, I would like to ask you if you have any questions for me. I, I will stop sharing my screen. <laughs> thank you very much, Irina, for your presentation. And thank you for the insights of how it goes at UMC Utrecht. It was, it was great to see. I don't know whether there are any questions. Um, Rory, Gary, Caroline, Soil. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Rory. Uh, there I am. Yeah, there yeah. you are. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, uh, you mentioned in, in your talk, you said that the, the DMP um, inter interacts or connects with other other resources that uh, other policy or other research resources. Would you be able to mention just some of the some of the more important ones? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so we have some questions about data storage and indeed what I said about the personal data. Who can access the personal data? Um, so in the DMP guidance, uh, we tell researchers only authorized people should have access to your to the personal data collected in your research. Um, one way to do that is by using our UMC Utrecht research folder structure. This is a role-based folder tree, basically, um, where there's role-based access. So only, for example, data managers and a very selective group of the research team can access personal data, while the pseudonymized data is, is also accessible to other people. So that is one example of how we try to combine the DMP and asking about uh, about these uh, measures uh, to their practices. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, don't know whether there are any further questions at all. Feel free to pop them into the chat as well. Sorry, Rory, you were going to speak? Uh, no, no, I, I, I asked my question already, thanks. Ah, good. Okay. That's great. Thank you, Irina, again. Um, it is much appreciated you found the time this morning. Um, like I said, I, I really I was wrong timing on my end, I must admit. I didn't realize this will be at the same time as the RDA week, but it's great. We will be having the recording as well, which will be shared with the community. So um, it's much appreciated. If we, if we don't have uh, more questions for Irina, uh, we can just go through a few updates and if you have any questions for me feel free to ask me in the chat or unmute yourself um just a few things um 
I don't know whether uh, you have seen our most recent blog post. Uh, we have changed the process of um, customizing the pages for the enhanced clients. Um, I'm sharing the link uh, for that as well in the chat function. Um, like many of you already know, we are offering two types of subscriptions, the basic and the enhanced. And it's the enhanced where you get your customized uh, pages and the look and feel. And we found out with, with these, we used to have loads of backward and forward. So uh, we wanted to ensure the process um, is improved. So we added, for example, a step of UAT um, for you. So you will be uh, given a guidance how to test your pages prior they go live, as well as us we will be uh, looking into this and ensuring that there is nothing missed before the go live date. Um, another thing we, we have added is that in the form, we specified uh, the format of the logo and favicon. So uh, when you're uploading which logo and favicon you want to use on your pages, now we specify the specific format as well. And we are also introducing a policy of cycles of releases. Um, it will be um, something we want to test and hopefully this will streamline the process as well and you will know the deadlines when to expect your pages to go live much better. Um, if this will not work for it, whatever reason or you know um, you have any other suggestion, feel free to get in touch with us. But this is something we would like to test as we feel this will make the process more um, transparent and easier to follow for all. Um, I don't know how many of you have joined also the DMP online demo sessions. Um, for those who don't know, uh, demo sessions are slightly different to these drop-ins. Drop-ins are great because we normally get the community to speak together. And like we had today, Irina, um, she's presenting either, um, you know, how they use DMP online uh, at your institution or another way um, these sessions have been used are just in general to discuss the research data management practices um, across the community, which is quite valuable. The demo sessions differentiate because they are very specific about the functionalities of DMP online. Um, and I just written a short guidance, uh, not guidance, uh, sorry, short summary of the sessions um, since we started to run these. So feel free to have a look at the blog post and join us. The next one will be in May. And I might be a little bit challenging. I, I subscribe myself to do this on Google Analytics. Um, so I hope um, I'll, I'll learn Google Analytics before uh, myself. And for those um, who don't know, or maybe many of you already know, we have done the Rails 5 upgrade and um, I'll just share again the link here. Um, we have a GitHub page where we are updating you about the progress. I must admit it has been already a week and I have been supporting a few of the sessions there as well. So this is not the most updated list, but I'll do my best to update it today because uh, much more bugs um, on this page are actually already fixed. And currently we are mainly looking at the individual bugs raised by each institution as well as some API issues. Um, so these are the updates from me. Um, I don't know whether there are any questions around any of what I have mentioned. If, if not, um, I'll just share a few more links with you. Um, our April newsletter is out, um, so feel free to have a look. And if you're not subscribed, uh, do hit the subscribe button. Also, our March recording um, is out and we do have a playlist of all the drop-ins ever since we started to have these. So actually, let me copy and paste the link again. I don't think this is the whole playlist, so it's here. And if you wish to be our uh, new guest speaker, we are always uh, looking for volunteers. It is much appreciated for all that join us. And we also appreciate our guest speakers and, um, as we normally have loads of discussions going on here. Um, but again, I do apologize. It was very wrong timing for me. Um, it is the RDA week and I think um, many of our uh, community members are actually attending uh, this week there as well. Last but not least, um, if there are no more questions, um, 
as always, feel free to always drop us an email at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. We do have Twitter, so if you're not following us yet, do follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn and subscribe to our monthly newsletters. I have just shared all the links in the chat. And join us in the next drop-in session, um, which will be on the 25th of May, uh, half past 10 in the morning. Our speaker will be this time around um, from Erasmus University Rotterdam. And I hope you'll be able to make it. I would like to say one big thank you again to Irina. Today has been very, very uh, small drop-in session, but much valued. And thank you so much for your time. And thank you all the attendees for joining us today. And I wish you a lovely day. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>